When I first started dealing with internet memes back in 2013, I had to explain to my academic audience what an internet meme actually was in the first place. I had to start with Richard Dawkins, criticize him and his theoretical proposals, and so on and so forth. In 2013, I got into internet memes as I discovered what I would later regard as the Cattetta Stone, I can as cheeseburger, a single broken English sentence from 2007 which generated a whole new language, so-called lawspeak. Obviously, 2013 was the year when you would have people on the streets or in their office doing the Harlem Shake flash mobs and videos, something unprecedented and unrepeated. At the time, I did not know what an internet meme was. I've always hated internet and youth lingo. I'm not a nerd, nor a geek, nor a member myself. But at the same time, I am, and I already was, in 2013, a semiotician. And semiotics, which is what a semiotician would study and practice, should deal with signs, texts, languages, communication and meaning-making practices. So memes seem to me as pretty fitting all these categories. In 2013, instead, semiotics was simply ignoring virality and memes, which was bananas, as memes seem to me as practically designed to be studied in a semiotic fashion, and definitely they are the semiotic specimen of our times. I actually dare to say that virality and memes, which are obviously related and do overlap a lot but are not the very same thing, are the main communicative language of our times. If something is being selected as somewhat relevant, even if it is something stupid, obviously, its destiny is to spread or to be remixed ad libitum in the process. Today, I can start every semiotics of memes presentation with the freshest, the newest meme du jour. Today, I do not even have to see that something did happen in order to know it. I can just see the memes thereof. I start seeing all these shaman memes and I immediately understand that something really strange is happening in Washington. Actually, I got into semiotics due to strange things such as Frank Zappa, James Joyce or The Simpsons. So I guess it is no nonsense that I ended up studying internet memes. Semiotics needs to study memes in order to be up to date. As a matter of fact, 50 years ago, Umberto Eco studied things such as television, James Bond movies and comics. And at the same time, I think that semiotics can shed light on memes way better than other approaches. So, back in 2013, I started reading all the good stuff. Jenkins, Schiffman, Meta Haven, Milner. And I tried myself to outline my own semiotic theory or at least typology. So I studied memes as a whole, as a general phenomenon. I've studied Catholic sense memes. Yes, they are a thing. I've studied Corona memes. And I've been using memes as a tool to spread semiotics itself on the social media. In 2013, things were different. Now memes are all over the place. They have changed, they have widened, narrowed, Some of them are extremely specialized, sectarian, idiosyncratic. We talk about dunk, deep fried, meta, post, etc. Memes have intruded, both mirroring and in turn shaping, our infosphere and on life, to quote philosopher Luciano Floridi. For example, in 2014, my mother did not know what emoticons were and how to use them in a text. Today, via text, she can give me an astonishingly intuitive definition of internet meme. God, I'm now sick of these memes. 
By the way, I'm not particularly theoretically intrigued by all the memes as art thing, rather by memes as mainstream, normy, if you will, culture and phenomena, and not by political memes, which are obviously very important and much studied, but by memes as formal structure, which is what I will talk about in the next few minutes. Virality is an umbrella term that mainstream media, professionals in marketing business and communication scholars apply to a wide range of internet phenomena that spread like wildfire in an uncontrolled fashion, etc. The metaphorical image of contagion is powerful and effective, which granted great success to this notion, but it also assigns user a passive role, echoing the old hypodermic needle or magic bullet theory. Moreover, it is heuristically useless. Applying the category of viral to a given phenomenon does not help us understand it. Still, today, the success of a given piece of media content is precisely to achieve the status of viral. Something everybody's talking about all the time, at the same time, though ephemerally. A kind of digital update of Andy Warhol's 50 minutes of fame. At closer scrutiny, things spread online not so much thanks to uncontrolled replication per se, a ready-made token being posted, copied and reposted, but rather thanks to an articulate set of appropriation and manipulation practices, where a token turns into a whole new type of its own. By plagiarizing mythologist Joseph Campbell, we may say, meme is the type with a thousand tokens. Semiotically speaking, communication is not merely the linear exchange of information, but rather a translational ecology wherein fatic and identity values play a key role so that the pragmatics overcomes the semantics. In other words, it is not so relevant what we are saying, but how and to whom. Studying internet memes, the most popular macro typology among the so-called viral contents, may help clarify the whole thing. Circulating mainly as captioned pictures and videos, most of them being ephemeral, some others being persistent, memes are featured by icastic, semiolingo for vivid, incisive, icastic qualities and easiness to be modified and personalized. In this respect, their heterogeneous pre-digital phylogeny may include anonymous art, from the surrealists, cadavresqui to Banksy, political mottos, keep calm and carry on, remix cultures, from Aristophanes satires to subvertising, vernacular religious iconography, let's think of the countless diatopically diverse representations of the very same saintly figure. On the one hand, memes feature a semantic hook which enables engagement, a striking, whimsical element, a punctum in Roland Barthes' terminology, which is a mistake in a very general sense, from the broken English of lolcats to kofefe, to the exaggerated facial expressions in emoticons and meme icons. Kilroy was here, may provide the best prototype of this category. On the other hand, memes feature a syntactic hook, which enables user's agency. A template, a formula, a modular serial syntagm that makes them rickety, symbiotic. Keep calm and carry on may serve as the best prototype of this category. So, some memes strongly rely upon their very structure. Sean Rintel talked about templatability. Other memes rely upon their iconicity. You can understand the distracted boyfriend, Drake's hotline bling, is this a pigeon, Bart it's Homer, women yelling at a cat, Catalan's banana, even though you do not know the very figures, which are basically narrative functions, actants in semiolingo. On the contrary, you cannot laugh at something featuring Chuck Norris, Kim Jong-un, 
unless you do know the very nature of these figures, which are specific characters. Some memes are allegorical and thematic, as they establish their own topic. Other memes are referential and rematic, as they say something about something that is being granted as already known, part of the shared knowledge, what Echo called encyclopedia. In sociolinguistic terms, memes are stylistic practices around which communities congeal, wherein members challenge each other as regards their both encyclopedic and textual competencies. As a matter of fact, memes can be created according to three main radicals, to use Northrop Fry's terminology. Three radicals which outline a chronological and a formal typology at the same time, a kind of digital update of Claude Lévi-Strauss bricolage and Gérard Genet hypertextuality. Sharing, sampling and remixing, remaking. There is no such a thing as the alleged formula of virality, whose mythology is being elaborated within digital marketing. In fact, virality itself embraces the forms of formulaic communication, wherein each single user may express themselves idiosyncratically, by either letting themselves being infected or contrasting broadcasted messages in order to participate in the flow of online discourse. Proper memes are not merely viral content, rather meta-viral content. They actually do raise virality to the square, to quote again Gérard Genet. They are not so much the means to spread a given piece of media, nor they talk about it per se, but rather are the parody of the very internet fed, talking about collective obsession for it. Memes are the cultural catchphrases we engage with in order to talk about ourselves and our semiosphere, with the excuse of conversing about the current events everybody else is talking about. Originally devoted to humor, playful, parody and satire purposes, in recent years memetic communication has degenerated, literally. It has gone outside its original borders as a textual genre becoming a kind of meta-macro-discursive palimpsest. A simple example, people who wanted to pay homage to the little refugee Aylan Kurdi, washed ashore in Turkey in 2015, created involuntary memes out of the original viral picture. Today's memeplex is an infrastructure onto which many discourses are being implemented, art, politics, religion, including obviously the outcomes of the so-called post-truth zeitgeist, conspiracy theories, pseudoscience, misinformation, fake news, etc. This whole field of discourse stands as a true challenge to semiotics as regards the very possibility of the interpreter to decode the message. The digital message in a bottle contemporary memes are. I said that I'm not that interested in political memes, but I'm definitely super interested in their political economy of meaning. So, who is saying what and how, seriously, playfully, sarcastically, post-ironically, to whom?